Space, one of the longest advantages in chess. It's determined by how far your pawns are advanced. To its owner, it often grants more mobility and range for your pieces. And to the side that is dealing with a lack of space, usually you are dealing with cramped pieces that are having trouble moving. We are gonna explore all these topics today. We are also gonna be talking about the importance of pawn majorities, what they are, and what to do with them. I'm National Master Jesse Cohen. This is Summit School of Chess. Let's get started. <music> What is a space advantage? Simply put, a space advantage is dictated by how far your pawns are pushed. For example, some openings will get you space advantages better than other ones. Uh, one of my favorites, uh, as an example, is the Alakine's defense. After e4, black brings out this knight to f6, attacking the pawn. We save the pawn with attack on the knight. Knight d5, boom, boom here, here, and you can even play this move, known as the four pawns attack. I'm not gonna get too much into the openings. What I want you to see instead is that white has pawns much more advanced compared to black's pawns. And this is kind of a double-edged sword. Um, first of all, when you advanced pawns this far, you are getting more mobility, more squares available for your pieces to move to, and typically less squares for your opponent to move to move to okay um and as a result there are some basic strategies that you want to use while having a space advantage or if you are playing against a space advantage okay thing number one if you have a space advantage you want to gain even more of it and make it even better okay so yes it is nice enough that in this position we have two pawns advanced that give us the most territory gain, but by playing c4 attacking the knight, followed by f4 reinforcing our center, we only further gain our space advantage, making it better. Thing number two is you want to avoid trading pieces, okay? So like here, here's a good example of this. Um, a good example of a space advantage where someone's really cramped is like the Philidor defense actually. Uh, Rui Lopez Stein's uh, defense, there we go. Here, 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 here. Castles kingside, yeah. And um, in this position right here, black is pretty cramped. It might not seem like it very much, but white simply because white has the most advanced pawn in this position compared to black's pawn, you will notice that white has much more room for the pieces. Um, I encourage you, if you're not sure about this, to take the opportunity to actually count it out. Count out how many squares this white queen can go to compared to black's queen, and compare the bishops, the knights, and so forth, and you will find that white typically has many more squares to uh, to move comparatively. And so yeah, when you have a space advantage, you're going to want to do many things. You're going to want to A, gain more space. White is going to be thinking about ideas like f4 sooner or later to increase the current space gain advantage. Number two, you want to avoid trading pieces. Think about it like this. Think about it like this. All these pieces that are stuck in this small space, bump it into each other, fighting for room, okay? What is the solution for black? Well, there's a couple of options. Number one, you can either trade off some pieces that way you have less pieces fighting for that smaller territory. That way they're not bumping around so much. Or you can try to get some territory back. But in this position, in this, in this specific position, it's gonna be really hard for black to play pawn to d5 because white has so much control over it and that's how black would gain more space and open up the pieces, okay? Um, the last thing that you wanna do when you have a space advantage, um, there's this opening called the Benoni, um, I think, or let me just, uh, let me remember this correctly. I do believe it's the Benoni, e4, uh, d4 here, 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 here. Let me just uh, double check on this. E take, oops. E takes d5, c takes d5, d6, knight f3, g6, e4, bishop g7. Yeah, okay, so 
In this position, even though it's not necessarily that clear yet, white has a space advantage. White has more pawns advanced compared to black. And uh, this is giving more room for white's pieces to move and less room for black's pieces. And now white makes a surprising move. And instead of continuing to develop the bishops, which would be normal, perhaps a move like bishop to b5 check, um, instead, white plays the correct move pawn to h3. This is the third main idea when it comes to having a space advantage. You want to take away the safe squares, especially the good safe squares, that your opponent still has for their pieces. g4 could be an excellent square for this bishop to come and pin the knight, maybe even trade off because, hey, black is cramped. Or it might be a good way for black to relocate the knight from g4 into e5, which would open up that bishop a bit more, okay? So again, when you have a space advantage, you want to keep gaining more space, avoid trading pieces, and take away the good squares from your opponent's pieces. On the other hand, if you don't have a space advantage, you want to try and claim some territory of your own, trade off some pieces, and you know get those pieces to the best squares that they can, make the most of what you got. The other thing that I wanna talk about in this position, and this is actually, it's actually interesting that we're talking about the Benoni right now, is that we're actually gonna go over to this position here right now. And as you can see, this comes from a Benoni. In this position, white has the most pawns advanced in the center. This gives white a space advantage. So in this position, white should be looking for all sorts of plans that include gaining more space, avoiding trades, and taking away squares from black. When I first saw this position, I thought, you know, we need to move these bishops so that we can play pawn to f4 and maybe play for pawn to e5, maybe even play pawn g4 and just keep gaining that space and taking away squares from black's pieces. But again, we also have to be aware of what black is up to. And in this position, there's another difference going on. Remember that in chess, it's really about creating differences, or as Jeremy Silman calls it, imbalances, and then fighting hard to make your imbalances, your differences, superior to your opponents. In this position, there are also pawn majorities. What do I mean by that? Well, a majority means you have more of something than, your, than the comparative. So in this position, if we look at just the A, B, and C files, black has three black pawns, and we have two. Three to two. Black has the pawn majority on the queen side, and we have the pawn minority. However, if we look in the center, in the center, we have a two to one pawn majority, okay? Now, why do we care about pawn majorities? It's because pawn majorities have the best chance to get a passed pawn, okay? So basically, breaking down this position, aside from trying to get your pieces to better squares and yada, 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 white should be trying to gain more space by playing moves like this and eventually playing for e5. White should not be trying to trade pieces and white should be trying to take away squares from black. Black, and notice that by pushing here, black would, white would be trying to mobilize the pawn majority and use our extra force to get a breakthrough and get some sort of pass pawn going, open up our pieces, yada, yada. Black, on the other hand, would like to play moves like pawn b5, pawn c4, pawn b4, and start pushing that pawn majority, which will do two important things for black. Number one, black is cramped in this position, so gaining some space will alleviate some of that lack of mobility and running into each other. The other thing that this is gonna do is allow black to mobilize the pawn majority and start pushing it, okay? If you could imagine this position with only pawns on the board, okay, let's go back to the situation. Let's actually take away all the pieces on this board except for the pawns. This is what I'm trying to show you, okay? Which is basically, if you look at the pawn structure here and the pawn structure here, it's identical, isn't it? Except for the pawn a6. That's the only thing that's not identical. So we'll, we'll change that, okay? We'll change that. Um, again, in this position, if we look at the a, b, and c, Black has three pawns and we have two. So if black can get in the moves pawn b5, pawn c4, pawn b4, and pawn c3, then after pawn takes pawn and pawn takes back, black will have a passed pawn, a pawn that cannot be stopped by white's pawns and has to be restricted by pieces. A huge annoyance. And it's only two squares away from queening. On the other hand, if we look at white's position, white has the center pawn majority of two on one. We want to play e5, but it's just not safe yet. So if we can play pawn to f4 and pawn to e5, oops, and pawn to e5, 
Then after pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn, now we suddenly have a pass pawn to go boom, 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 and make our queen, okay? But here's the deal. We need to go back to this position. In this position, not only is it important that we, as future chess masters, see what the main ideas are for each side in a given position, but you should also be able to determine whose ideas are coming faster and stronger. The fact is, is that there is nothing in this whole wide world that is stopping black from playing b5 and then c4. Nothing. But black has quite a bit restricting our ability to play e5. Therefore, typically in chess, I am a huge proponent. I'm a huge fan of just going after your ideas and focusing on your plans and strategies and tactics, but also being aware of what the opponent's up to. Normally, I do not suggest reacting to the opponent or stopping what you're doing to focus on them unless you have to. But if you can take one or two moves out of your big schedule of planning and you can stop or slow down your opponent's plans significantly, especially in a position like this where their plans are coming faster than yours, then you probably should. The true answer in this position for both space and for pawn majority reasons is the move pawn to a4. The purpose of this move is few things. Number one, it simply prevents white from playing or it prevents black from playing the move pawn to b5, which is their natural space gaining move. Um, notice that depending on how black reacts, it's going to make things, you know, harder or, or, or not. Um, for example, after pawn to a4, let's say black says, I'm going to play rook to b8 to support that. So now if White just does some move, I'll play pawn b5, pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn. Well, now what white will play is pawn to a5. What's the purpose of this move? Well, if you play pawn b5, you've just moved a pawn two squares, side by side against my pawn. Don't forget the special rule of en passant. A takes b6 en passant, and now we get that open pathway, and you don't get that nice space advantage. You don't get all that control that you were hoping for, okay? Um, and so that means if black actually wants to achieve b5 someday in the long term, black's got to play the move b5 right now before white can play a5, or and then play rook b5, b8, and this slow plan of actually trying to stop it. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, again, hear me out on this. Here are the main takeaways from today. Number one, space advantage. If you want to be a master in chess, you've got to learn how to identify all the different advantages and disadvantages or imbalances. You have got to identify all the major differences for both sides in a position, and you've got to know what that tells you about what the strategy should be, okay? In this case, we saw a position that was semi-closed, so we knew things were not gonna happen that fast. We saw a space advantage for white, telling us we wanna gain more space, avoid trading pieces, and take away squares that the opponent wants to move their pieces to. We also saw about pawn majorities. And by understanding both of those things, we were able to determine in this position that Black's plan was simply coming faster and stronger than ours, and that with just one itty bitty move, we can slow it down significantly. And for that, we are willing to stop the opponent. Not start reacting to the opponent, but to slow them down, okay? But then we will immediately get back into focusing on our ideas, because again, remember, insisting on our ideas is how we're gonna win a lot of chess games, right? Okay, I'm gonna cut this off at this point. I am so happy uh, that you're here with me again. Um, quick announcement, um, I did do the filming for the uh, chess video, the chess, the professional short chess film that's going to be coming out uh, with the director Bruce Tetsuya back this last Sunday. And I'm told that hopefully everything going, going well, that the final copy should be available for us uh, within a few weeks, tops. And so I will be sending out some, uh, some teaser trailers and, uh, and photos showing you kind of some, you know, some little snippets um, before it comes out. And then, yeah, I will I will definitely do an announcement of when I'm gonna drop this, but um, I am so excited. It looks amazing. Uh, please stay tuned for that. Again, please make sure to like, subscribe, ring that bell, tell your friends, let's make something awesome. I'm National Master Jesse Cohen. This is Summit School of Chess, and I will catch you next time. Bye.